a little tour of the camera setup I have for wildlife. Starting off with this one who has not captured anything because of the location where it's supposed to be looking at and don't seem to be having much activity in that area. And I'm doing a beta test on it and we'll see how it works. But this, I'll put another picture right after so you can see what I'm looking at. Someday you might be able to see a animal that it's captured and you know where it was. The next one is another spot that I'm trying out. And you can see this is an area that uh, has a lot of potential. Most I've been getting just uh, rabbits, but I think I'm going to be getting some coyotes here pretty soon. And you can see it's kind of my standard setup where I have a camera and I put it inside a uh, milk container to protect it from the elements to some degree. It protects it from the rain, but condensation is still a problem. And I just mount it on a, a piece of wood to keep it from being blown over. And I'll come back and get these in a little bit. The next one is kind of an experiment. And this is part of the surveillance camera setup. And it's temporary for right now, looking for uh, ultimate uh, locations. So right now I just have it set up, and kind of wedging it underneath the gutter there. Um, had got a, have had a lot of good views with this setup so far. So it, this will probably be a good location. I'll just have a more permanent setup for it. Eventually we're going to get up to that one up there. And that just basically is a three inch PVC pipe that's been pounded into the ground. And then I put another one of my little... Um, milk bottle, uh, milk carton uh, setups, and it holds on to a camera looking at the uh, slope area up there. But we'll get to that in a little bit. This is the famous avocado tree that uh, quite a few of the animals seem to come by here. And oops, this is another setup I have. This is one of the first cameras that I've ever had. And I put it inside a container to protect it from the elements. And again, it does a pretty good job with the rain, but not so great for condensation and such. Again, it's very similar like the other one. I have it on a two by four, and that aids it from being um, for positioning. And when I used to just put it in there without being held on to anything, some of the little critters decided to knock it over and knock it out. So, and with the delay of the uh, camera, sometimes I wouldn't even know what it was. So here's the trench that a lot of the animals use up the side of my property right now. <clears throat> and it goes all the way up along the fence line here, all the way to the street. You see some of the critters go through this little um, hole in the fence, only the small ones, of course. A neighbor said that she's actually had some small coyotes come through there, but mostly it's uh, bobcats and raccoons and skunks and possums and rabbits. And here's the uh, other camera. You can see it's set up. It's pretty easy just to set the camera inside uh, there as, as uh, without having to attach it to anything, just to actually set it on a little shelf there. And again, it protects it from the elements not condensation. So let's go back down here. We still have more cameras. Here's another prime spot. Seeing coyotes usually coming into my property, coming down this trench area here. And so it gets a good view of me. And again, using the milk bottle. Um, inside there, I will show you that I've actually Frankensteined it by putting on an auxiliary battery. This is a basically a two cell lithium that I actually have a converter placed inside the uh, camera so it doesn't eat up the batteries. This one is would eat up batteries very quickly because I get a lot of activity. So uh, every two days I will pull the um, rechargeable battery out and charge it back up and I have it set up to where it's easy to remove 
and not to be able to knock over very easily. Here's some more experiments of cameras. Initially, I had that camera at the very top, and that's an IP camera, and it's still working. Um, I don't use it anymore, but it's up to check on um, any activities back here because I can view it remotely uh, through my uh, cell phone. And uh, the advantage this also has is that it actually has sound. And surveillance cameras that I've added now, they just don't record sound. Uh, I'm looking for some that will because it does add a sense of reality to it. These are infrared illuminators that I've added on there. And so it has its own uh, infrared light. And then these two kind of broaden out uh, the area that it sees. And that one actually adds a little bit also. And I'll probably decommission that one um, eventually because um, it's kind of redundant from the other uh, camera. This again, this is just temporary. Looking for a um, a a permanent spot for it and deciding how low I want to get it. Uh, most of your uh, security systems will mount things pretty high and you get a different angle. This one actually has a lower angle, which is kind of enjoyable when viewing animals. And here are two more cameras. Set it up on a, uh, to get it the right height because the sensors kind of look at a certain elevation and if it's too low you'll miss a lot of the animals so i had to get it up high enough uh, to where the sensors would work but also um, low enough to where it's actually enjoyable to see them at their own height again using the milk bottle idea to protect them from the wind and the elements and this one right here This views all the way down that way. And I got more cameras there. But first, we're going to take a look at some more experimental locations. This is another surveillance camera that I have here. Again, trying to find out what the proper location will be for it. And this is my older camera. I had an a IP camera here like the other one. Um, it's still working, but I'll decommission it because I'm not really using it for anything. And again, some more of the um, illuminators. These are... Uh, 850 nanometers which means you can actually see a pink glow and these cameras seem to use that just fine so on to some more cameras it's beginning to rain right now so i picked a good time to start this because i'll be able to end it soon let's we'll start off with this one over here this one is set up to see if there's any activity in my uh, pool enclosure here. And it did catch one coyote a while ago, mostly rabbits, but it's uh, not a frequently triggered camera. And we'll go to another one here. This is one of another one of my original cameras. And I also have it on a, a um, rechargeable battery on the inside and it's much bigger I once a week usually is enough for this camera and here's another camera here this is kind of Frankenstein again because the uh, mechanism inside for the LEDs to work stopped and also the trigger sets for the um, IR cut filter stopped so I had to manually keep it in the position for nighttime um, otherwise, it, that's why you, uh, some of the films are a little bit distorted in color. And here's another IR filter. And you see the inside of this looks like. I have a different type of battery system. I have a 4.2 volt that actually is up voltage up to 6 volts. But that'll last me over a month because it's not triggering any infrared LEDs, which is the biggest battery draw. And on to our final camera. This uses the 
method of a carton as to protect it from the elements and also keep it from falling out and such. And this is the view that it normally would have. And it's pretty picky on, on detecting motion. And so uh, I sometimes don't get motion that I really should. But this is the area that it normally can catch. So those are all the cameras and the reasons why I use them. Please remember to subscribe and share this video to help disabled animals with donated wheelchairs.